Brother Keith, you talked about uh, getting up behind some devotions. I think I should have traded places with you tonight and done missions update and you could have preached. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of men in this church I definitely feel unworthy to go behind and preach the message. Uh, Kenny, I'm sure, has been preaching longer than I've probably been alive. Keith, too. I'm thankful for some men of God that'll stand. Thankful for some men of God that'll keep with the same Bible, that'll keep going the same way. And I'm sure Trevor would repeat that same thing. I battled all day what to preach, and Josh texted me right before service and said, I'm praying for you, and I said, I need it. I can't settle in. And he said, I know what you're going through. I had the thought of a, a Christian's call. And it was alliterated perfect. It was outlined perfect. And I was ready to preach it. But the message isn't going to be like that. And it isn't going to be something I usually preach about. Uh, me and Matt, we ate lunch the other day at work. And I told him I'm not typically a topical preacher. Well, tonight, <laughs> I guess I am. I think about what one preacher said I was listening to the other day, and he was battling about a message, and the, he had what he wanted to preach, and the Lord had what he wanted him to preach, and he said, the Lord told him, you bear mind God. So that's what I want to do this evening. This isn't how I normally preach, but tonight, that's what we're going with. 1 Peter 5.8. One verse, and I'm going to give you a simple thought. It's not going to be some extravagant, something you're going to have to pull out a dictionary for. It's just a simple thought that the Lord gave me this week, and I've had the verse on my heart, and I couldn't get it out. 1 Peter 5.8. The Bible says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil... As a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Brother Keith, I'll be honest with you. It may be little for some, but I feel like the devil's really been on me. This whole pregnancy, the end of it. Just feel like it was weighing me down. And I just felt like the devil was on me. Then I come in here and I know some of y'all battling cancer. I know some of y'all battling all these other things. And the devil's on you too. And I think about that. And I think about this verse. And there's a few words that jump, or actually just two words that jump out to me. A roaring lion. There's no doubt that we truly have an adversary in this world. We have an enemy that's out to get us. He's out to ruin our testimony. He's out to ruin our marriages. He's out to ruin our homes. He's out to ruin everything that we have that the Lord's given us. We truly have an adversary. The trials and temptations that we have on this earth, I'm ready to get rid of. I believe as Brother Kenny said, heaven's sounding a little bit sweeter. At 31 years old, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to get out of this wicked world. I'm ready to quit seeing the wicked news. Whoever would have thought that they could be doing the babies what they're doing over there? Whoever would have thought that? Whoever would have thought that they could just go into a home and just massacre a family? A family that's not in war. A family that's just at home. And I think about my family at home often. Whether we're sitting around the dinner table, whatever we're doing, we think we're safe. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. We have an adversary. We have an enemy that's out to get us. And I just want to talk about him just for a little while. In this passage, he's compared to a lion. It says, a roaring lion. I just want you to think about some simple attributes and comparisons of a lion and why he would be compared to him. First thing I want you to know is a lion patrols. What you'll find when you study about lions is they don't just go out and hunt. They do research. That old lion, 
You know, sometimes it's our flesh that gets us. When we get in the car, here's the difference. That temptation of that radio is there. Is it not? It is. But what we turn it on is our flesh. But that old devil puts that temptation there. I'd rather those temptations never be there. I'd rather never to have to worry about it. But we always have that option. 2 Corinthians 2.11 says, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. What a truth that is. And his devices are different for each and every one of us. The devices he uses against me are not the same that he's going to use against Jacob. They're not the same that he's going to use against Vivian. They're going to be different for each and every person. Job 1, 6 through 7 says, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. The devil himself was looking for a prey. He was studying. He was looking for whom he may devour. May I tell you, he has not changed this evening. He is still looking for whom he may devour. He's still looking for that one who is on the edge who he can get. And the sad part is when we read the verses in Job, we know that Job was a perfect and upright man. He's not just looking for the weak one. He's looking for the one that's strong. He's looking for the one that's on. We'd say he was up here. He's looking for that preacher. He's looking for that father. He's looking for that mother that he can ruin their testimony. The next thing we see is a lion likes the dark. What you'll find is that when you study a lion, they spend most of their time up at night. They spend most of their time in the dark. John 3, 19 through 21 says, And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. Now I know none of y'all do this, but when typically we sin, we're not in the light. We're in no secret places. We're where nobody thinks of. We're where nobody is. We're in the dark. We're where we think we're alone. And our adversary is right there with us. He knows what we're thinking. He knows what we're doing. John 8, 12 says, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. As a Christian, there are simple verses we need to cling to. That's one of them. That he is the light. That's the light we need to be with. The third thing we see is, and I hope you all get this, not only does a lion like the dark, he likes the storm. It says that their most active hunting time is in the midst of a storm. Would you believe that? I would. Is that not the truth? <laughs> when we're in that storm of our life, when things are weighing down on us, and we start pulling away from God, that's when that devil has his biggest opportunity. He knows that's when he can sway us a little his way. And typically once we start leaning that way, typically we're just going to keep going that way. It's a sad, sad statement. It's a sad, sad path. Matthew eight twenty six says, And he saith unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. I want you to start thinking about all the times that Israel, that the disciples were in a storm. And I want you to start thinking about what happened to them. Don't ever put yourself above anybody in the Bible. 
Oftentimes we'll read through Judges and we'll say, we'll never do that. Right? But the truth is, look at the world today. How many times have we went the wrong way? The next thing you'll see is a lion hunts in packs. It's possible to be in the wrong pack. There's a verse that says, if I can find it, sorry. There's a verse that says uh, that you, man, ye of your father the devil. I want you to think about that. He used to be our father. We used to be part of his pack. And if you're a child of the king, you've been adopted and placed in a different one. And I want you to think about that. It's easy to run with the wrong pack. When I've walked away from God, when I've walked away from church, when I've walked away from everything that I knew to be right, it tended to be when I was running with the wrong pack. It tended to be when I wasn't where I needed to be. It tended to be when I was in the dark. And guess what? If I had been in the right pack, I probably wouldn't have been there. Ephesians 6, 10 through 12 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. There's three different things listed in that verse that we wrestle against. There are multiple things the devil will use. It's not just himself. Young boys, he might use a woman. I think a Delilah ruined Samson's testimony. I think of all these other people time and time again that I've seen happen. I think of my own wife. Matthew 12, 30 says, He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. We're called to be with him. We're, we have a holy calling, a sanctified calling. We're not just called to come in here and sit on a pew. We're called to take the gospel to a lost and dying world. We're called to have a testimony to where we can. If you don't have a testimony, how can you take it to somebody else who doesn't? And I want you to think on those things. But how many times in the Bible are we referred to as sheep? A lone sheep is in immediate danger of the line. We need to make sure we're in the right pack. And lastly but not least, a lion roars. The text says a roaring lion. When I started reading that, I found what most people said to be the number one reason that a lion roars is to show his power, to show his authority. But I'm glad tonight that we have a greater lion. And I think of that line of Judah. Hosea 11, 10 says, They shall walk after the Lord. He shall roar like a lion. When he shall roar, then the children shall tremble from the west. I have news for you this evening. In the end, we win. It might not look good tonight, but we win. Revelations 20, 10 says, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are. And he shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. There ought to be some Christians tonight that get a little bit happy that we have a Lord, that we win in the end, that we have a place we're going tonight. That's all I have for you tonight. It's a simple thought, but that is it. I hope you were able to get something tonight. But I am glad tonight that it's not in myself. It's in what Christ did for us. Brother Keith, will you pray to dismiss us this evening?